Chad Allen. Like I said, he's a legend and um, a writing coach. And um, so I'm so excited to learn from him. And I know you are too. Chad, I'm going to turn it over to you and tell you thank you again for being here. Oh, my pleasure. This is so much fun because, you know, I've been in the Flip Lifestyle community for, I think it's it's been about a year. Uh, I actually met Shane through uh, a mutual friend. And uh, I had been wanting to do a subscription-based uh, business for a while, like all of you, or most of you anyway. And um, and so I actually entered the Flip Lifestyle uh, community world through his Membership Masters newsletter, which has been temporarily discontinued, but they're, they, they, they are giving back issues, which has been great. And it's really helped me grow my membership site. So uh, just a little a little uh, story about me. I was a military kid. I bounced around a lot, lived in multiple places as I grew up, but ended up in Nebraska, of all places, for my uh, bachelor's degree, which I got in English. And didn't really, I graduated with an English degree, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I watched uh, the movie Shadowlands, starring Anthony Hopkins and Deborah Winger. So in that movie, that's it's really the story of C.S. Lewis's love life. C.S. Lewis, by the way, wrote the Narnia Chronicles, uh, the the Screw Tape Letters, and a bunch of other books. Very popular, one of the most popular Christian writers in in the modern era. And um, and in that movie. Um, Joy Davidman, who eventually becomes C.S. Lewis's wife, has a son, and her son's name is Douglas. And as a high, as a as a um, as a college student, I watched that movie and I thought, hmm, you know, C.S. Lewis and Joy Davidman had long since passed, but I wondered about that little boy. And I did the math in my head, and I th- I thought, you know, he's probably in his fifties or so. So this is going somewhere, hang with me. So I eventually reached out. Back then it wasn't Google, it was Ask Jeeves or something like that, <laughs> I'm dating myself. But uh, for you youngsters, there was this thing before Google called Ask Jeeves and Yahoo and these other, these other engines. And um, I found his email address and we started up a correspondence. So the stepson of C.S. Lewis and I started up an email correspondence that lasted for well over a year while I was in college. And after I graduated, I got up the gumption to ask him if I could like volunteer for, for my my awesome services as a 20 something to his work. What was his work? He was a, um, he ran a ministry, but he was also the general consultant to the company that owned all the rights to C.S. Lewis's work. So Anytime a new book about C.S. Lewis or an abridgment of, of one of Lewis's books or whatever, uh, before it went to press, it came across his desk. Well, long story short, he said, yeah, come on over. And I went to Ireland where he was living. So this is shortly after college graduation. I went to Ireland. And I live with the stepson of C.S. Lewis in his mansion, 12 bedroom mansion in County Carlow, Ireland for about eight months. And that is where I was first exposed to this whole world of publishing. Um, I'd always been a book guy, but I learned that there were these people behind the scenes that actually had a big impact on how books looked in the marketplace. And I was sold. I was like, "This, I've got to be a part of this this enterprise. So um, I got back to the States um, and um, so, so it was at Doug's place that I like saw what proof pages looked like and, and the different people who were involved in making books happen in the traditional publishing industry. And that really ignited my interest in the publishing inter- industry. And so when I got back to the States, that's what I pursued. I spent 20 plus years in the uh, traditional publishing industry um, the last place I worked was Baker. Some of you may know Baker Publishing Group here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I currently live. And uh, I started as a project editor overseeing copy editing and proofreading. Very soon was halftime acquisitions, halftime project editor. Very soon after that, I was full-time acquisitions editor. And acquisitions editor brings books under contract. That's what their job is, essentially, as well as developing manuscripts they're trying to bring books under contract. So we 
we pitch books to other colleagues in hopes that everybody will get on board and we can offer a book deal to an author. So I acquired something like 20 to 30 books a year. And then the last seven years at Baker, I was the editorial director of the Baker Books um, division. And then I read uh, Platform by Michael Hyatt and started blogging back in 2012. And that led to a business. I would get up early in the morning and just start. And, and initially I was kind of blogging all over the place. I didn't know what I wanted to write. So I just, I just kind of went blah. And I noticed pretty quickly when I wrote about publishing, people showed up, they commented, they were engaged, they shared my posts. And I was like, aha, maybe I should write more about publishing and, and writing and, and so on. So my blog is, by the way, chadrallen.com. And, um, and that's how I got my start. Well, Platform, the book became Platform University, which by the way, is a membership site. And, um, and I joined Platform University and through that entered a mastermind group of entrepreneurs that was headed up by my great friend, Jonathan Milligan. Jonathan and Shane should definitely know each other if they don't already, because they would get on, they would get on famously, I think. But anyway, um, Jonathan had this entrepreneurs group and we would meet, I think weekly. And, uh, and I just, I was really nervous about it, but uh, you know, it was a group of about seven people. And I said, you know, I've been blogging for a while and I've been thinking about monetizing. <laughs> like, I didn't even know how to pronounce it. Right. Like, <laughs> So, so, and they were very gracious and they're like, absolutely, you should be making money from what you're doing. And one of the fellas, his name uh, is Dale Callahan. He said, you know, Chad, if you could teach me how to write a book proposal, that would be amazing. And by that point, I'd literally reviewed hundreds of book proposals. And so I was like, I think I'd have a few things to say about that. So my, so what I started with was not a membership site. It was a course. Again, this is back in 20, I don't know, I'm guessing like 2015, somewhere in there. It was called Book Proposal Academy. And it started as a, uh, just a series of teleconference calls. I used like free teleconferencecall.com or something like that. And I promised six and gave them eight. I wanted to over deliver, right? And uh, and I walked them through the process of writing a proposal. And each of them, there were 10 people and they each paid me a hundred dollars. And I was over the moon. I was just, I was over the moon that this could happen. And that turned eventually into a digital course. And then I started doing uh, one -on one-on-one coaching. Um, I started at, I think it was $150 a month. Um, for my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. And I, I had been building this list, right? Like Shane talks a lot about growing your email list, really, really important. So I'd been growing this email list, serving that list faithfully with content. I'd done this one course. That was, any, that was all I'd done in terms of monetizing. And then I decided I wanted to open up some coaching spots. And so I sent out an email and I said, this is, I'm still working at Baker, right? I'm still at Baker. And I, I figured out, like, I think I could take like half of a Friday, like once or twice a month, I could do vacation time. And with flex time, I think I could make it work. I wrote this email. I still have this email. And I said, I'm, I'm starting this coaching program. I have five spots available. They're $150 each, first come, first serve. And within an hour, they were gone. So now I went from making $1,000 on this course to making recurring whatever 150 times five is. Can somebody do the math and put it in the chat room? I don't know what that is. But anyway, like recurring, uh, like each month. And then I, because they those spots got snatched up so quickly, I talked to my wife and I was like, maybe I could finagle 10 clients. And those were, the next five were gone within 24 hours. So I had 10 coaching clients. And I realized, oh my goodness, people really are willing to give me money for my expertise and my experience, just as they are willing to do for you. And so, um, and then, so I did that for a while. I still have some one-on-one -on -one clients. My one-on-one -on -one coaching is a lot more expensive now. I now charge a thousand dollars a month, partly because I don't want that many one-on-one -on -one clients. I don't have the bandwidth and I want to serve the ones that I have really, really well, but it started at 150 a month. And then eventually I was like, I would love to do 
uh, a membership program. Um, because here's the thing, writing a good book takes time. Um, there are a lot of people out there who will tell you, you can get this done, you know, before dinner tonight, which you can, but it won't be a very good book. If you want to write a good book, it takes a while. And it, it takes a while too, to build an audience. There are things that you can do to, to shorten the process. It takes a while to cultivate trust. And so I really like the membership model for what I'm doing because it allows me to gather a tribe of folks who are all on this journey together and uh, and and help them. So we have inside book camp, we have what's called the success trail. And it's kind of our, you know, like like Shane has the the blueprint, right? Uh, this is our blueprint. It's a it's a trail map that starts with establishing a writing habit. And then we help you establish a, a website if you don't already have one, uh, grow your platform, uh, develop a book concept, write a book proposal, pursue one means of publication or another, and then launch and promote. That's the journey that we take writers on inside book camp. And it's been amazing. We have over 200 people in there. And um, it's been, it's, I kind of feel like book camp is the culmination of everything I've done up to up to book camp. Uh, it is definitely my primary focus and I just absolutely love it. I know they're wondering, how did you grow it to 200 members? 200 plus. Okay. One of the biggest lessons I've learned from Shane is I went from being obsessive about retention to being obsessive about growth. So, um, so when I, early on, I was like, I, I, anytime somebody canceled, it was like, oh, I don't, I was, it was just awful. Um, but I moved from that to, because the fact is people are going to leave, right? Like, I, I maybe it was Shane who said that recently. Yeah, he said that in a, in a podcast not too long ago. The reality is, at some point, everybody is going to leave your membership. Like, it's just true, because you're not going to be around forever, right? Like, at some point, they're going to leave. So to move from that idea of like, oh, I just want to I want to keep all these people that are that are with me to you know how can I serve more and more people. So I used trials. Um, the great thing about a membership program that I just absolutely love is, um, you know, you 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 kind of figure out what your content is for your folks, and you have the different things in place. Like for book camp, there's a private Facebook group. I do a a monthly fireside chat, we call it, where it's a it's training and a Q&A. And then I do some other live events. And then and then once a month, people can send, They this is a huge part of book camp, they can send in their own content for my review, right? Like that's huge. And so far, I've been able to handle it myself. If we get a whole lot bigger, I'll probably have to hire some folks to help me with that. But anyway, you figure out the different pieces of your membership. Once you have that figured out, not that it never changes, it often does. But you you then are freed up to get creative with your marketing, and um, and Shane is a master at uh, you know creatively marketing a membership. So um, so I think it really starts with growing your email list, um, and the way I've grown my email list is the first method I used what used was. Um, what, what some have called the eager sneezer method. And I know Shane has some content on this. I haven't I haven't really stepped into it. So um, so I, I don't know what he suggests, but because I, I have an email list and I, I've been growing it and continue to grow it. The way that I got started is with the eager sneezers. The eager sneezers are the people who know you and like you, who are not currently on your email list, who would be willing to share content that you create, whether it's a podcast or blog posts or, or videos, whatever it is. So that, so sneezing is a metaphor for sharing, eager sneezer. So um, the, way it, the way it looked, it's really glamorous, is you pick up your phone <laughs> and you like go, hey, John, I'm starting this uh, new group where I let people know about, um, you know, give give people great ideas about writing and publishing. It seemed like something you might be interested in. Do you want in? And when they text back and say yes, you just manually add them. And so those are some of the most important people to get on your list, because even if they're not in your target market, they are connected to people who are. So you might need to say in your text, 
even if this isn't something that interests you, I would really love your help getting the word out. And then if there, as, long as, as long as they know you and like you, they're going to say yes to being on your email list. You do that with your text messages. You do that in email. A great tactic is just to go to your sent items of your email and just email anybody who knows you and likes you and is not currently on your email list. And you do it one by one. You don't do this with a mass broadcast because it, does not, it doesn't convert nearly as well as if you write one-on-one -on -one emails. You can copy and paste some of it, but you want to customize the, the beginning and end and watch them come in, you know? And so I know that sounds daunting, but listen, turn on Netflix, watch reruns of The Office, whatever it is you do, like enjoy yourself, but just send out, you know, maybe it's 10 a day or five a day. You send out five a day, that's, you know, 25 a week. I mean, you imagine how, how fast you could grow your email list. And then it's serving that email list with great content. You know, if there's one thing we can learn from Shane and we can learn a lot from Shane, it's that he is, he is tireless about a podcast episode. What is it? Once a week, twice a week, Dylan, that he releases a podcast? Once a week, at least. Yeah. Once a week. Yeah. So he's just like clockwork, consistent, way more consistent than I am. <laughs> and um and so you'd start doing that and you build this trust, this reciprocity with your folks. And that's really what leads to, um, to sales. This is my favorite book on book marketing, your first 1000 copies by Tim Grawl. And, um, and so I had, I asked Tim to deliver a webinar to my audience. So I, um, I showed up with the audience and he got all the, he hosted the registration page. So he got all those email addresses, well over 200 email addresses. And then, and then he's going to do the same for me. So I will host the registration page, but he will bring the audience and then I will deliver a training to his audience. And so that's, you know, I'll get, I'll probably get hundreds of email addresses just from that one partnership. So those are my two biggies, eager sneezer and, and partnerships. And of course, the lead magnet one is also huge. Um, but once you have a, a great lead magnet, you need to have traffic to your site. How do you get traffic to your site? Great free content that then you're sharing on social media and you're asking your you know, email list you already have to share for you, et cetera. So you just develop this virtual cycle of growth, virtuous cycle of growth. And then you start to, um, on, on the heels of that, you start to build out your business. Chad, thank that. you. I would love to have you back in the spring and just oh, continue I, this conversation. I, this was amazing. Well, I thank you. My this brain is exploding and I know others are too. <laughs> that's very kind. This, this flip lifestyle community has been a lifesaver for me. Uh, I've been, I've, I share my my success stories in the forums and I ask questions and uh, really it just, it's been really, really helpful. And so I'm delighted that it's, that this has been helpful to you folks and would love to serve in any way that I can. Thank you.